And you got back to the UK yesterday? Yeah, the day before yesterday. How is it being back? Uh, very good. There's a lot of food, which is amazing. <laughs> You're making the most of it? Yeah, I, I haven't stopped eating, I don't think. I lost 10 kilos on the, on the trek, so I'm trying to put it all back on. Uh, and I'm doing very well. So it's a new January, new you. Yeah, uh, new certainly me. we'll be talking about that. This is your kit. This is what you had to carry. This is. This is what, tell us, tell us daily how long you were going and, and sort of how tricky it was. Um, so I was uh, just over 12 hours a day. Um, I get up at 5.30 um, and I'd start going. I wouldn't stop until basically I couldn't walk anymore in the evening. And I was covering up to about 40 kilometres a day um, with the sled. And it now only weighs about 40 kilos. But at the start, it was uh, just over 100, so about 106 kilos when I started off. So this is this is some footage of you training, I think, isn't it? Um, right. Trying to sort of get used to that sort of constant drag. That's right. Um, yeah. So I was actually out in Brunei for the last two years with the Royal Gurkha Rifles. So I had the beach uh, close by, and that was actually where I did most of my training, rather than in snow conditions, was dragging <laughs> a tire up and down uh, next to the South China Sea. How do you know when you're ready? I mean, you say you take two years to train, but obviously it's not like you can kind of. You know, I know you can sort of think about what the conditions are going to be like, but yeah. it's not until you get out there, I suppose, and you're right in the middle of it that you realise the true impact of it. Yeah, absolutely. I did a big final sort of test exercise where I went to Svalbard in the Arctic Circle and I went from east to west and it was uh, by myself and it was the longest I'd been by myself in those conditions. And that was sort of my, you know, go, don't go moment where if, if that all went well and I, I was happy with, with how it went, I, I'd go for it. And I, I felt confident after that, so I decided to give it a go. So you did it unaided, you're on your own. How many days was it? Um, it took me 38. I had 50, yeah. 50 days worth of supplies uh, and I managed to get in. Um, 38. So you broke the record being the youngest. You did it in the fastest time. But being on your own, how tricky was it being on your own? Because I know that you were, there's constant sunshine in theory, so you were charging everything by solar power, but there was a period where you had no sun. Yeah, so for the second week, it was six days. I was in a whiteout, uh, which is like being on the inside of a ping pong ball. You can't see which way's up, which way's down. You get very disoriented and I couldn't charge my iPod. Um, so I was literally so no music, or no music. So I was just staring at the tips of my skis for 12 oh, no. hours a day, um, trapped in the sort of dark recess of my mind. Because your friends and family put together playlists for you, hadn't they? They did, yeah. Um, my my girlfriend got like a desert island disc sort of thing, and they just put some of the worst music of all time. <laughs> so just to cheer you up. Yeah, Chris and Kem from Love Island made a few appearances, oh. uh, and Frozen was on there. Very very many times. <laughs> very apt. Good sense yeah. of humour. So what do you think was the hardest thing then? Was it the coping with being on your own? Was it you know the physical exertion the mental side of it definitely the mental uh, and it's just the fact that you're by yourself and no one's really there to, to make you accountable so when you're sitting there and you're, you're really hungry there's no one to stop you from actually going in and tucking into tomorrow's rations and things like that so I actually was I was putting my food 10 15 meters away from my tent because I was I was so hungry that I was really <laughs> desperate to get in there and start eating the next did you, know, you ever give in I got out in the middle of the night once and I, I crawled out in basically a blizzard and ended up oh. eating a piece of chocolate from the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so desperate. It was a pathetic moment, I think, in my life. But that <laughs> mental strain, the mental battle was, was torturing you, just lying in the tent, knowing that the food's there and you could just go and have a little bit of it. It was tough, yeah. I was burning between seven and 9,000 calories every single day and you can only absorb 6,000 calories, so I was in a huge deficit. Um, from, from the start, which was, which was quite tough. And just how cold was it? I mean, I don't like the cold, and just the thought of this is just horrendous. And I understand, though, that you had to be careful about balancing out, because you didn't want to get too hot under all the clothing, did you? Yeah, absolutely. So, it, I mean, Antarctica is the coldest continent on Earth. The coldest temperatures ever were there. I was there in the summer, so actually I had pretty balmy temperatures of, like, minus 25, minus 30, with the balmy. wind chill uh, on top. <laughs> I mean, positively balmy, yeah, yeah. it can get down to minus 89 degrees oh, there, wow. so I was quite lucky. But I worked with um, Shackleton to develop this jacket. Okay, so this say, is a big jacket. Talk us through the Charlotte's going to put the I'm jacket gonna, on so I'm you can demonstrate it. Yeah, you can try it. This is actually good down to minus 60. Uh, and I would wear this when I'd sit on... It's like wearing a duvet. Yeah, I'd sit on my, um, I'd sit on my sled and have my snacks. When, when I'd stop moving, I'd put this on and I could sit in the middle of a huge sort of oh, Antarctic nice. storm. I could do with one of these. I Just know, in the studio, it's nice and cosy. Yeah. And this weighs, how much is this now, well, Scott, your sled? How much is this weighing at the minute? Um, that's about 40 kilos now. All the food's come out, um, got smashed on excess baggage on the way back. <laughs> so I, I know exactly how heavy that is. So Charlotte reckons she could give this a, uh, a quick pull, didn't yeah. you? Go on then. So where, how, how do you no, go No, but about? I want to make it look easier. Well, I haven't got anything. a harness on, but yeah, if you, from that end, oh, give actually. it a... Come on. You've pulled heavier oh, stuff oh, than that. There on. you go, you're fine, hold you're just smashing it. There we go. <laughs> right. Making it look a bit too easy. He's just struggled <laughs> all the way across Sorry. South Pole. He did Pole. say that the weight had gone, though. Yeah, it's 40. It's about... In her high heels as well, Scott. I know. Really to shame here, by the way. <laughs> next, next winter, she'll get after it. She's struggling. <laughs> it's almost strictly training, you see. So, look, I mean, interestingly, uh, you've managed to achieve this, which is extraordinary. What's the next challenge for you? Oh, well, I'm, I'm sort of focusing back to work now. I'm back with the Gurkhas, uh, and, you know, we've got a busy year ahead of us. So, back to work on Monday, actually, on back exercise. Back to work on Monday. Yeah.
You put that down. I know. Tell me, that's yeah. quite a good workout.